Nahi nahi nohua Nahi nahi nohua Nahi nahi My dream was to dream in Wiyat and not in English. Nahi nahi nohua Nahi nahi nohua Nahi nahi nohua Long before Columbus discovered America, long before the Crusades, since the very beginnings of Christianity, the Wiat people have lived in Humboldt Bay in Northern California. These peaceful people developed a highly sophisticated society of ocean and river fishing technology, of trade in clothing and shell jewelry, with a rich cultural heritage of song and dance, starting each year with a world renewal ceremony. Probably with the arrival of the Wiat, the first really big villages um, emerged at about a thousand years ago. And they have the plank houses, all, all the kinds of artifacts and economic systems that are associated with the Wiat and the Yurok. From Wigi, which is Humboldt Bay, you go north to Little River, which is just above McKinleyville and below Trinidad. And you go out to Berry Summit, and then you go down across Neelan, Horse Mountain, and down to Chalk Mountain. And then you come back down on Bear River Ridge. There's Eel River, Bear River, there's Van Dusen River, Little River, and uh, Mad River. Eel River today was called Wiat. And the uh, Dequat, the white people, came in and saw there was so much eels that they renamed it Eel River, took the name of the river, and gave it to the people who lived along it. The Yurok and the Wiat are not classified with California Indian groups. They're actually um, considered part of the northwest coast, in fact, the southernmost expression. Archaeological and linguistic threads told a tale of California indigenous language density among the highest in the world, and the connection of the Wiat language with Algonquin, stretching from the Montana Blackfeet in the west to the main Passamaquoddy in the east. The Wiat land of coastal salt marsh, prairie scrub territory, and redwood forest was rich in natural resources. The 1949 gold rush brought prospectors and agriculture to Humboldt Bay and tragedy to the Wiat people. At dawn in late February 1860, certain citizens brutally massacred the Wiat women, children, and elders during the world renewal ceremony at Tulawat on Indian Island, as reported to the world by Bret Hart. Only one infant, Jerry James, survived the massacre, seen here in 1910. The Wiat people numbered three to 5,000 before 1850 and 100 in 1910. Today, the resurgence of interest by the Wiat in their language and culture enables the process of regaining what was lost to begin. Many other Native American people long to recover this spark. This is our story. It, it took one massacre, yeah. three massacres, yeah. to put a culture at, at stop. Yeah. There was a group in Eureka bought property down in the old reservation site oh. in 1908. And gave it to the Wiat people because the Wiat people did not have a place they called their own. Their own. Yeah. By the 50s, the termination laws came into effect and terminating Indians from the East Coast to the West Coast. Hmm. And we happen to be one of those tribes that got terminated. So culture is really important. It defines who we are. Yeah. But as my grandfather said, I'm not teaching you anything. The white people are here to stay. We have to get along. People don't understand. So your grandfather didn't want to teach you the culture Correct. because he thought it well, wouldn't because be any use? It wouldn't be any use. Plus, he got, you know, really verbally beat up over it. Carl Teeter, a 27-year-old Berkeley graduate student on a GI Bill with a young family, 
definitively linked Wiat to Algonquin languages through his construction of Wiat from the last native speaker in the 1950s. His gathered stories and recordings preserved the language for posterity. People of the generation who didn't learn their language uh, have grown up feeling that something's missing. And what I think is important to them is a sense of their own identity, their own autonomy. And so the language brings them that, that sense of autonomy, of reclaiming their own history, reclaiming their own culture, uh, and reclaiming their sense of who they are. I started doing field work on a Native American language with the last speaker in 1956 and working as a graduate student in linguistics. And in 1959, I'd essentially finished enough field work to uh, do a dissertation. This linguistics department was only formally, uh, actually formed uh, a little over 50 years ago. I see. So um, I, I believe Carl was one of the early grad students. Mm -hmm. We developed the Breath of Life workshop for California Indians without speakers. That program has to be oriented toward documentation since documentation is all that there is left. Every other summer now we run a week-long workshop, an intensive workshop at UC Berkeley. We discuss how to um, use the materials for language revitalization purposes, how to develop language lessons, how to find useful language that they can use in daily life. So that we can continue our quest for our language. And you've employed Bill Weigel, Weigel from Berkeley? Yes, that? he's going to come in. He's coming to work on the uh, alphabet mm -hmm. for us. The, the primary uh, grammatical description, which is what we rely on, for the sort of the heart of revitalizing the language is right here in Carl's The We Ought Language, which was based on his research with uh, Della Prince, one of the, uh, the speaker I'm sure you've heard references to. I dreamed that the We Ought would really embrace their culture because that's what makes us different than the next group that comes along. I see that the language is really important. The last 15 years have brought new life to the awakening Wiat language and culture. Through Humboldt state linguist Victor Gola, Carl Teeter met Cheryl Seidner and gave her his Wiat language materials. Victory, in a federal lawsuit, restored tribal status and provided funds for 88 acres and tribal housing at Table Bluff. Descendants of Jerry James began an annual late February vigil for healing in the community. The Eureka City Council voted to return 60 acres of Indian Island to the tribe. The young woman's coming of age ceremony was danced. The tribe purchased a ship dry dock at Tulawat on Indian Island to protect an ancient clamshell burial mound from further erosion and to clean up the toxic repair facility. We'll be contracting with the WIOT to do that excavation um, as part of removing the hazardous waste and we'll be working closely with tribal members. All along the margins of the deposit where the, where the dry dock was, we'll be doing hand excavations and screening and to reconstruct a place for the world renewal ceremony on the island. Language, culture, and the land are sacred, and once again coming alive for the Wiat people. I ask for a song from the Creator, from God, and say, you know, here we are, we're still a people, mm. we're still a viable people, and we have not gone to sleep. We are here. Hey, 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 no, hey, 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 no, hey.